So that's better now, she paces at least. Thank you, Dr. Haig. I don't know where you are right now, but thanks for the introduction. <laughs> um, I feel, as we are here on an institute of learning, that I wanted to talk to you a little bit. First of all, and not only explaining the instrument, which I will do because I know you are interested in it, that you should be, but I want to answer some questions which I think are in your mind, even if you have not expressed it. You may ask yourself, why does a person who lives in 1961 play an instrument which was used around 1750? We have wonderful pianos, as you know. Why go back to an instrument which has existed, has lived, and has outlived his time, so we thought. I give you the answer which I think is right to this. We live in an age which is very much concerned to produce the art the way they were produced at the time they were created. And the sound is very important to this. Uh, you, certainly you can <coughs> play some of the music which I play for you tonight on the piano. It will sound different, but you will recognize it. But some of the music which I will play, you will feel this is not meant for the piano at all. This needs a different sonority and different possibilities. And to be true to the music of the time, we should at least try to recreate it on the instrument for which it was written. Even then, we are not 100% true, I'm convinced, because I'm convinced that our feeling for tempo is entirely different as it was in Bach's time. It can't be different, because we live much faster than the people in the 16th and 17th century did. And everything we do and they did must be different. It took Bach a whole night to drive from Leipzig to Berlin to visit Frederick the Great, of course, he had only a post coach. We fly today 25 minutes. I flew this way, so I can tell you. And this is only one example. So in spite of using the instrument of the past, I'm sure we don't play exactly as the masters of the past would have played it. But this is not important. We must be true to ourselves and to the music as we see today. But listening to the music, on the instrument for which the music was conceived might be quite a revelation to you. Some pieces you would like better on the piano if you knew them. Some you would feel, oh, they are just right for this instrument. Fifty years ago, nobody thought of using old instruments. But thanks to the wonderful work of the musicologists who have discovered so many original treaties, not is written today about, uh, by someone thinking about what was done a few hundred years ago, but treatises written at a time when this music was written. They helped, uh, helped us to find the way back to this instrument. The instrument is entirely different from a piano. It has keys as a piano has, but it functions differently. There are plectrums which pluck the strings, and the plucked instrument is entirely different to the hammer clavier or the piano, as you know it, where the hammer strikes the string. Have you the uh, plectrums? Somebody has it. I want to uh, let it go around. Yeah? Will you give it around, please? Please uh, look at it. This little laser which you see in front plucks the string when I press the key down and then jumps back again. So you see a plucked, uh, yeah, it has to go through the road here, not just one person. I'm sure I get it back at the end, I trust you all, so let it go through the whole row, yeah? <laughs> the plectrum was made out of quills. Now one uses nylon, I dislike it greatly, and mostly leather. These plectrums you have in your hand are made out of leather. But the uh, fundamental idea is that it is a plucked instrument. 
This is the same. We have two keyboards, the, key, the bigger instruments. They are smaller instruments which have only one keyboard. But the big instruments have two keyboards uh, with different sound character, which you will hear when I play. The music is so conceived that it makes use of the different sound characters of the keyboards. And not only this, you have every uh, make of harpsichords does it differently, but my harpsichord has seven pedals, and each of the pedals produces something different. I will play you a tone with just a simple string plug, one string plug. Now you will hear the higher octave sounding with it. Now you have all three strings plugged. The upper keyboard is more clear. Can be a little louder. And what you do with it is not written by the composer. He leaves it to the taste of the performer. There's nothing written in piano and forte, as you probably see in modern edition, which made up the old music. Nothing is written. One leaves it like for the organist to his good taste and to his liking what he uses. So what we call registration is made by the artist. You can hear the same piece which I played today by somebody else who registers this after his conviction entirely different. Uh, to play nowadays more on the harpsichord, the old music, is a great advantage and a great progress. Many universities I have visited have already their own harpsichord, and I'm pleased to say that many of my students are teaching there the art of harpsichord playing. It was not always so. The 19th century, and up to the First World War, probably, people felt, oh, this is lovely music, but we have to do something about it to make it sound on the piano. And they added whatever they wanted to. And one of the uh, loveliest examples is, I have to tell you, this is what happened to me when I first came to the United States. In 38, I was invited to play for uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Spray Coolidge at the Library of Congress. She has heard me in Salzburg, invited me. And Professor Leopold Godowski, a very famous pianist, teacher, virtuoso, gave a tea party for me in New York to help me to get acquainted and make people know me better. My English was even much poorer than it is today. And I was very shy. And so he took me and said, very loud, he said, my dear, tell us, what are you going to play in Washington? And I said, the chromatic fantasy and fugue. And he said, by who? As every musician knows who has written the chromatic fantasy and fugue, I thought I must have misunderstood him. It's impossible. So I didn't say anything. Then he said, by who? I said, very shyly and modestly, by Johann Sebastian Bach. He said, I know, I know. But Bach Liszt, Bach Busoni, Bach Tausig, Bach Godowski, everything was reworked, you know, to fit it to our modern piano. This almost has disappeared. When you look at the program of a pianist, you hardly see any Bach Busoni, Bach Liszt, Bach Tausig, Bach uh, Godowski anymore. And this is a great advantage because the harpsichord came into the foreground and people felt. This is a music which was meant for the harpsichord and should be played on the harpsichord. Many pieces are beautiful on the piano too, but they shouldn't be adjusted to the mechanism of the harpsichord too much. One should leave the music alone. And now I have chosen a few pieces which show you the possibilities of the harpsichord. The first is a, pa a passacaglia by Handel. Passacaglia has a bass which doesn't change. The harmonies are always the same. But uh, sometimes the right hand, sometimes the left hand has figurations and gives the instrument and the player lots of possibility to change the sonority. So I start with the passacaglia by hand.
a piece by Bach. You might not know it, you might, I don't know, but anyhow it's interesting because from the beginning you feel this was meant for an instrument with two keyboards. as he's called in all the books the greatest musical genius of this time and probably of all times, which is built on an echo motif all the time. You will hear it the moment I start.
a very famous piece, which I just mentioned before when I told you the story about Professor Godovsky and myself in New York. I will p play just the fantasy of it, the chromatic fantasy. It's called chromatic because most of the thematic material is chromatically conceived. This means that no tone is in between. It goes in the fugue, it's even more outstanding than in the fantasy. But I play the fantasy only because here you will appreciate the possibilities of the harpsichord, the change of register, register or dynamics, whatever you want to call it. But it's more than dynamics. Sometimes it's not louder, the character of the register is different. It's a chromatic fantasy.
concerto in Italian style. There's not much Italian about it, I can tell you, but the form Bach took from the Italian masters. The first and last movement are vivid. The second movement is like an aria. 